hope that that doesn't disappoint a lot of your fans and readers. <laughs> I don't think it would. I don't think it would. Um, do you want me to go through a couple of them, or do you want to just go around? Uh, What's your, um, well, actually, here's the one I like. Um, someone said, if you could cast movies from any era, who would you choose? If you could have any actors, dead or alive, who would you choose? Well, I would take the era from years ago, because my favorites were Errol Flynn and Clark Gable and Humphrey Bogart and people like that. Uh, so that would be the era I would pick, and those would be the ones I choose. Okay, then I'll step one more and then pass it on. How do you view the role of women in the history of comics? Characters, writers, artists, and how much has changed till now? Well, um, well... To me, women are incredibly important, both in comics and in real life. <laughs> and I don't know about the change. I mean, we've always had women in comics. Um, I think they're drawn a little bit sexier now because the artists seem to be able to get away with it, and I personally have no objection to that. Um, but they haven't changed all that much. The formula still seems to be the woman is in peril and the guy has to save her. Although occasionally you get a woman who is the heroine and she's the one with the power and the like Wonder Woman. But they're still in the minority. It's still the big, strong, brave man like me <laughs> has to save the um, fragile, lovely female. And I kind of like that formula. What made me want to do it? The fact that someone else did most of the work. <laughs> um, well, every time I meet fans, a good many of them either want to write comics or draw comics. And they're always saying to me, what advice would you give me if I want to be a comic book artist? Well, you can't do that in a couple of seconds or the few minutes allotted to me. So I feel it's good to have a book like this for somebody who really wants to draw comics. I it's something to refer to. I had done a book like this years ago with John Buscema, but that was years ago, and it's a, I think it's a wonderful book. But so much has changed since then that when I was talking to Nick Ferrucci, we decided maybe it's time for a new book with a lot of the new developments and the new things that have happened in the industry. And that's the reason for this. And now, if somebody comes over to me and says, hey, how do you draw comics? All I have to say is, make me a little richer by buying <laughs> Stan Lee how to draw comics. And it'll also make you much wiser. So over the many artists that you've worked with uh, over the decades, who are your favorites? I assume uh, Kirby has a place in the family. Oh, I, but, uh, you know, I, I'm not good at favorites because there are so many great artists I've worked with. Obviously, Kirby and Ditko, but there's also John Romita and John Buscema and um, Gene Colan and Gil Kane and dozens that I'm not even thinking of now. You know, Wally Wood and Ross Andrew. It, it, it goes on and on. I mean, I was the luckiest guy in the world. I think we had the best artists available, and they always made what I wrote look good. They, they, wrote, they drew these magnificent pages of artwork. I got a lot of credit for it. And, well, I shouldn't complain. That's a good arrangement. <coughs> uh, can I have one more? Sure. Can I, tell you? I need for the, uh, for the Daily News. We're doing a, uh, a story on Comic-Con, and you've been to a few of the New York shows. You've obviously been to San Diego. How do you see this show uh, over the last five years developing? Just like the one in San Diego and just like all the other cities, it gets bigger every year. It, more and more people are turning on to comics, and more and more people are turning on to the fact that comics lead to movies and television series, and people are so interested in movies and television series that it helps to bring them in, because they not only want to know about the comics, but they want to know about the new movies that are based on the comics and so forth. So it just gets bigger and bigger, and after a while, no arena will be big enough to hold all the people in any city. Oh, um, 
can't be anything left to ask. Yeah. It's been very nice. I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. That's people's first question. Um, so first of all, how does how the 21st century stack up to how you guys, you think, imagined it back in the 60s? Because you, you were writing stories about Atomic Power door locks and flaming people and rockets you could launch from Midtown Manhattan without destroying all the other buildings. So could you imagine what the 21st century is going to be like? What, what, how does it compare? I couldn't imagine what tomorrow was going to be like. I, everything changes so. I tell you, the biggest change in the world is the computer and the cell phone and the, um, all these things. And you can see things on your, on your phone. You, you could see a whole movie on your telephone. Um, so I don't know how to answer that. It, while we're talking, there are probably new developments coming along and new changes coming along. The nice thing to me is people will always want an exciting story. And it doesn't matter whether they're looking at it on their television screen or in a movie theater or on a little handheld telephone or whatever it is. They want stories. And luckily for me in the field I'm in, they like stories about people that are bigger than life. You know, I refer to these superhero stories as fairy tales for grown-ups because that's really what they are. If you think about it, when you were a kid, you were reading fairy tales. And you were reading about giants and ogres and witches and dragons and people who could fly and walk through walls and all of that. And now you've got superhero stories, and it's the same thing, but we put them in the present or in the future or wherever the hell we want to put them. And um, we haven't outgrown our love for fairy tales. We just transfer that love to the superhero stories. Gee, that was very profound. I'm glad we're recording that. Uh, that kind of dovetails nicely into now, uh, I'm sure that uh, maybe 20% or 30% of the people on the show floor today have been or are reading comics on digital devices like the phone, like the iPad. Do you think that that will change the way that stories are told, the way they're delivered? Do you think that's a really good way to share stories in comic form? That's an interesting question. If, if you're viewing a story on something this size, you can't have too many dialogue balloons because you wouldn't be able to read them. So you wouldn't have any dialogue balloons. You'd have to find a way to hear what the characters are saying. Every new format will change a little bit the way the story is told. But I think that um, the stories themselves basically will remain the same. It'll always be some person or some people who are bigger than life, who are able to do things no normal person can do, and they're either good or they're bad, and there's got to be somebody either bad or good who's also got some powers who's trying to stop them. And that formula, I think, will just go on forever. 